I'm Matt. If you find yourself working in the humanities, you'll probably end up using Chicago style for your papers. One of the unique aspects of Chicago style is its use of footnotes. In this video, we'll take a look at how footnotes are used and how to format them. While we'll be using information from the Chicago Style Guide, this video is not associated with the University of Chicago, so double check the Style Guide if you have any questions. In Chicago Style, footnotes take the place of in-text citations. Instead of naming the author in the text of the sentence or listing it at the end of the sentence in parentheses, you'll put a number in superscript at the end of the sentence. This number will correspond to a footnote at the bottom of the page, so your reader will be able to easily locate it and see the reference for the quote or paraphrase in your paper. The number should run in numerical order as you go through the document, so footnote number one will be the first note that appears in your paper, and so on. When you quote the same source multiple times, you don't need to include all of the information in every footnote. Just use the author's last name, a shortened version of the title of the source if possible, and the page number the quote appears on. You can also use this short form footnote if you use a bibliography or works cited page. Footnotes will usually follow the same format. Start with the footnote citation number. Remember, this number should match the superscript number you have at the end of the sentence where the source is quoted or paraphrased. Next, write the author's first and last name, followed by a comma. Then write the title of the work you're citing in italics. Now, in parentheses, write the place of publication, followed by a colon, and then the name of the publisher, followed by a comma, and then the date of publication. After the closed parenthesis, put a comma and then write the full range of page numbers you are citing from throughout your paper. Again, this is the information you need to include if you aren't using a bibliography and if this is the first time you are referencing a particular source. All other times you can use the shortened footnote form of the author's last name, shortened title, usually one or two words, and page number. While this general format for footnotes will cover most cases, there are some common exceptions. If you can't find the author's name anywhere in your source, you can just omit it and start your footnote with the title instead. If you can't find other pieces of information, like the publication date, or the name of the publisher, or if there are no pages, write ND for no date, and NP for no publisher, or no place, or no page. If you have a source with two or three authors, list their names in the order they appear on your source, with the word AND or a comma in between. If a source has more than four authors, instead of listing each author's name, just write the first author's name followed by the Latin term et al, which means and others. When you have a source that has other contributors, like a translator or an editor, you can include their names after the title. Be sure to indicate what their contribution was by writing trans for translator or ed for editor. In the shortened footnote, you can leave this information out. If the contributor takes the place of the author, you can use their name in place of the author. Again, indicate that this was their role by writing ed or trans. For an online source, you'll generally follow the same format as printed sources, but you'll include the URL, database name, or DOI link so that your reader can easily access your source. There are other bits of information that you might need to include or modify in a footnote, so if you still need help, try using the EasyBib citation tools to find the best way to cite your sources. That's all for Chicago style footnotes. Thanks for watching.